In one of my crusades, I asked all the women who came to the crusade barren over the years and they now have babies. I asked them, bring out those babies, let me see them. And they brought 300 children. Then I said, well, Yemi, you've preached in the crusade before. Then I said, I don't want to lose them. They should grow up where they were born. Samuel grew up in Shiloh until he became. So I don't want them to scatter. So I asked them to form a choir. And they formed children choir. 300 children. And they sing in my crusade every year. Their mothers joined them. So I appointed a lady that is so talented in music to help me coordinate them. Yemi C. Yemi C was coordinating them and organizing them. The ones that don't know how to sing yet, she will back that one while they are singing because that one is part of the choir. The ones that cannot sing, she will carry one here and be leading and directing. It's a sight to watch. One day I was preaching in Zaria and they called me that the MSC fell down and died. And I left the crusade that I was, I was weeping and I was saying to God, so I will not hear the MSC again singing. I packed my load and started traveling down. I met her in the University of Illinois Teaching Hospital, almost lifeless. And I went to her and held her leg. Muwake! Yeah, me see. Pada. Taloma ba me told you I'm on my Then she opened her eyes. And looked at me and said, Dad, why did you call me back? I had entered gate six. It remained one. And the angel to open gate seven put hand on the handle to see. And gate, gate seven is a glass door. And I could see paradise. I was already seeing Abraham. I was already seeing the angels in their choir and in their regal. And the angel put a hand on the handle to open it. I suddenly closed it back and said, go back. Your pastor has not released you. Bada. And then she looked back. And saw me weeping. And I was saying to her, Yeah, me see Nibulunlo. Taluma Bami told you come back. She on her own removed the oxygen, removed the drip, all the gadgets attached to her. She removed it and got up and we went home. Uh, good evening, my brother. Thank you so much for acceding to my uh, call and that's our call. Um, Thank you, sir. Um, there is a, a man that has been trending. You know, I've been getting his uh, video here and there. And uh, I believe that we can look at what he has been saying and that we can use it uh, or parallel it against the word of God. To see whether the, what the man has been saying has anything or is anything that one can just look at. 
the man, the, the thing about that on the, uh, a kind of uh, astounding miracles performed by the hand of this man. And we just need to look at it. How it's parallel with the uh, word of God. What it mm. is really. And um, if you can play the video again, sir. If you can play the video, so that people will see it and then we will be able to analyze it. So when I need you to stop, I will tell you to stop. In one of my crusades, I asked all the women who came to the crusade barren over the years, and they now I asked them, bring out those babies, let me see them. And they brought 300 children. Then I said, well, Yemi, you've preached in the crusade before. Then I said, I don't want to lose them. They should grow up where they were born. Until he became. So I don't want them to scatter. So I asked them to form a choir. And they formed children choir, 300 children. And they Thank sing you, in my crusade every year. Thank you so much. Can you stop it, sir? That is the gentleman. This gentleman, supposedly, you see, where he started, he had a crusade. And there have been about 300 people, the women who have been coming, barren to his former crusade. And now they are at three, they are at children, 300 of them. Supposedly, probably he has prayed for them one way or the other. And it's about him. He didn't want to lose them. He didn't want to lose the children born of that, of his previous crusade. So he asked them to form the choir. And I called a gentleman, Yemi, as a preacher at the crusade. And he spoke about Samuel being born in uh, Shiloh and grew up in Shiloh. By confirmation, sir, about what the man has said, it's one, he has power to make barren women produce children. Two, it's about him, the children that were born one way or the other, through one power or through any other power, I don't know what power it is, he didn't want to lose them. But what can you say about what that thing that you had briefly? What can you say about what you have had? Oh, thank you, sir. Um, um, well, uh, quickly came uh, came out to me was the introduction, really, uh, that he gave. Uh, he, um, the personalization alone uh, of Uh, it's a little, it's a little on, uh, it's, that, that's one of the earliest thing I can say, that if you hear things like that, that is a, that is a very good advertisement. Uh, of his prowess to, to get uh, barren women, uh, uh, to, to cause barren women to have children. To me, to me that, that sounded more like an advertisement. Yeah, that, that's the initial thing. Hearing him 
I get the impression of somebody, uh, well, even if it didn't mean it so, even, even if it didn't mean that it was supposed to person hearing him, particularly the average barren person, barren woman hearing him, you don't need any other thing than to say, no, don't, don't go for test, don't go for uh, IVF, don't go for, uh, don't pray any other, just go to our man. Because uh, according to him, I mean, it, it, where barrenness is cured, if if, uh, if at least if, if 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 not in Nigeria, because many of the many of the big um, consultants in uh, gynecology and IVF and the rest of them, they who can boast of uh, three hundred. Just one of the see that when I I, I I believe I believe you have not had wrongly and your assumptions are not wrong. That was what come out to me first that he was actually preaching himself. That I'm preaching Christ. He was actually, you know, Paul said in Second uh, Corinthians chapter four and verse five. Therefore, we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your born servant, for Jesus' sake. That's what Paul says. But in this way, it is an advertisement. He was preaching himself. There's no other way we can say it other than he was preaching himself. He was making himself to be something, just like uh, Simon the Sorcerer in uh, Acts chapter 8. Making himself to be something. That, uh, you have just said it. You no know, gynecologists or all these people who can actually boast or make boast of the kind of thing that you have said. And I think you, you are very right, sir. You are very right. And, and like I said, and the second thing that came to me is that. Everything is about personalization. It wants a choir to make a choir of the supposed children. Uh, we may not think, we may think that that is a small thing. He wants to uh, uh, mentor them, whichever way you want to put it. But we can see that there's not even a single quotation from the Bible. The only quotation I quoted from the Bible. Uh, oh, some, he mentioned in the Bible about Samuel. Samuel was not born in Shiloh. He was only brought to Shiloh by Anna, the yeah. mother, after the birth. So he wasn't born in Shiloh. He was brought there when Anna went in to uh, the, uh, uh, the high priest there. So, I mean, you, that's the distortion of the truth of the scripture. Thank you. We, we, we can continue so that we'll go back on to this. We can continue, sir. Let's join them. So talented in music to help me coordinate them. Yeah, me see. And organizing them. The ones that don't know how to sing yet, she will back because that one is part of the choir. The ones that cannot sing, she will carry one here and be leading and directing. It's a sight to watch. Zaria, and they called me that the MSC fell down and died. So I, I stopped it because I had I just had something which I want to I want both you and our audience to notice at that particular juncture that he was uh, preaching somewhere in Syria when he received a call 
that here me see died. Died. Yes, died, yes, yes. One thing that I, so that people will not, uh, because I listened to it sometime, maybe a day or two ago, and I discovered it, forward, you, you likely to change it. The story is likely to be a little. I just want us to notice that. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I actually thought you would you notice because Yemisi actually died. He was preaching in Zaria. When okay. he received a call that Yemisi fell and died. And okay, so. when you are listening to it, you find out that he, he found Yemisi in the mortuary. So go out there. In the mortuary. Yeah, you will see, you hear it. Okay. So, is, 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 since since uh, since she was dead. Yes. And uh, uh, I'm assuming that yeah, me see was was in the learning. Yes. This this a man is coming from uh, Saria. Is is likely going to take some hours before he will get to the learning. Yes. And yeah, Missy was already dead. Dead in the mortuary, really. Where she belonged. Basically. By the time he will get back from Milori, about five or six or even eight hours later. Yeah. Yeah, Missy, Drago Motis will have set it. If they did it, whether they put her in the in the mortuary or not, Rigor Motis will have set it. So okay. dead. Okay. I'm completely dead. Okay. Just okay. like Lazarus. Okay. Okay, so yes, so apparently yes. And I left the crusade that I was, I was weeping, and I was saying to God, I will not hear Yemisi again singing. I packed my load and started traveling down. I met her in the University of Illinois Teaching Hospital, almost lifeless. I don't know whether you you get I had, a, I had a, almost lifeless. So almost not in the mortuary. I thought I had mortuary before, but almost lifeless. But she was yes. already dead before yes. she, he left. Um, so, before, before he left, he left uh, Zaharia, and it will have taken yes. him a good part of seven hours to get from Zaria. Yeah, I will hours to get seven. from Zaria yes, to Ilori. Yeah. But now almost. Lifeless. The story changing. Almost, she she was almost lifeless. So they they we, she really wasn't dead apparently. No. No. Oh, okay. Okay. She was almost lifeless. Uh, uh, somebody said somebody said that is is like ah, are you are you pregnant or not? And the lady said that I'm almost pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> when when he got to the University of Illinois Teaching Hospital, yes, sir. Yemisi was almost lifeless. Mm -hmm. He now went to her bedside, had her had her food, and cried that Yemisi must come back, must return. Or oh, who else were to be, who else was to be taking a, a children choir? I don't know whether you whether you had that up to that level, sir. I had that, sir. Then she opened her eyes. <laughs> and looked at me and said, Dad, why did you call me back? Yeah, that, that he he had the food, <clears throat> uh, cried, and then uh, yeah, me see, open her eyes and said, "Dad, why yes. did you call me back?" Uh -huh, we are, I think we've gotten we so which means that you are the audio has worked to that level. Yes, sir. So yeah, yeah, me see was now started. 
asking why why our man the why the holy man should be calling him calling her back yes sir So, put sir, before we move too far, sir, yeah. the, the man did not tell us that the cry that he made was a prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus. No. The, the, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ has not featured in this discussion up to God, this level. Neither God nor Jesus Christ nor. Okay. No, no, I I'm just saying it so that perhaps you yourself fact again yeah. did you take note of the fact that the man has not the crying was not to the lord jesus christ and it was not in the name of the lord jesus christ it was a uh, what in the what in law they call it was done in his own self-recognizance yes sir oh okay good 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 so let's listen a little more to him sir <laughs> I had entered gate six. So let me see if I, I need to back it up a little. So that people will not lose track of what. Uh... And looked at me and said, Dad, why did you call me back? I had entered gate six. It remained one. And the angel to open gate seven put hand on the handle to see and gate, gate seven is a glass door and i could see paradise i was already seeing abraham i was already seeing the angels in their choir and in their rega <clears throat> sir uh, i'm with you I'm you are with me sir. Okay. With you. okay sir so you hear me see according to the according to the man was a uh, I had already passed uh, the six, uh, six gates. The six gate. the, 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 there are supposed to be seven gates. <laughs> yeah, there are supposed to be seven gates. She had already passed the six gates uh, on her way to paradise. And uh, the seventh gate, uh, the seventh gate, which was uh, which was a glass gate. Mm -hmm. Okay, which was a glass gate. The angel, the the porter angel, the angel that was the porter in that gate was already his his hand was already on the handle of the door and he the the angel was was already opening the that particular gate and uh, yemisi was already uh peeping i i think he has opened that so she peeped and saw abraham oh oh, oh fine sir yemisi had seen abraham by the time that the holy man made this uh is it made this cry yes I, I i think we are i think we are together up to this level sir we are together up to that one okay fine so let, let's listen a little more sir and the angel put a hand on the handle to open it and suddenly close it back and said go back your pastor has not released you mother yes. the angel opened the door Yes, sir. I almost opened the door. Yes, I don't know yes, which sir. one he was saying. No, the, 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 the gate had been opened because uh, Yemisi had actually seen Abraham. And he shut the door back. And, shut and the, the door reason back. why the angel shut the door back was the only man. This pastor because, had not released her. Ah, has not released her. Ah, yes. Yes. So, so God is subject to him. Death is subject to him. Angels listen to his voice. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Okay. Look back and saw me weeping. And I was saying to her, Hear me see Nibulun law. Come back. She on her own remove the oxygen, all the gadgets attached to her. She removed it and got up, and we went home. Okay, can you stop there now? Uh, let's tie stop, everything. Sir. Let's tie everything together. The first statement that came out of his mouth 
on Sunday, yeah, Missy was, yeah, Missy was there. At a later time, yeah, Missy was almost lifeless. In between, she was dead again. But she has passed the sixth gate, almost entering the seventh gate. Then she opened her eyes. And looked at me and said, Dad, why did you call me back? I had entered gate six. It remained one. And the angel to open gate seven put hand on the handle to see. And gate, gate seven is a glass door. And I could see paradise. I was already seeing Abraham. I was already seeing the angels in their choir and in their regal. And the angel put a hand on the hand. Sir, yes, I don't know what I hear. Are you hearing me, sir? I'm hearing you. I'm, I'm hearing you. Fine, fine. If you are hearing me, sir, um, I want, before before we go far, I want, I'm opening my Bible, sir, to the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter 16. Chapter I, I don't 16. know whether you have seen. Are you, are yes, you seeing my screen, sir? Yes, sir. Can you read what you have for my screen? Yes. The rich man and Lazarus. Okay. Go ahead, sir. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fell sumptuous every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at the, his gate full of salt and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's tables. Moreover, the dog came and licked his salt. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angel into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and set Abraham afar off, and Lazarus at his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in the flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thou thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which pass from us to you can cannot. Neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou will have sent him to my father's house, for our five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place to, in this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though war rose from the dead. Are you seeing that place that I highlighted, sir? Yes, please. From verse 27 to 31. From verse 27. That's uh, five verses. The last five verses in the book yes, of. In the book of Luke, chapter 16, from verse 27 to verse 31, uh, people, can, people can read them so as to see the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. The teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ is consistent with the teachings of the Bible about, about the interaction, about God forbidding any interaction between the dead and the living. In the Old Testament, it is called necromancy. Yes. 
It is called necromancy, which in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18, from verse 10 to verse 12, God says is an abomination. In verse 27, sir, at least you, you can see what you have on your screen. There the he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that Good. thou would have sent him to my father's house. Mm. That, the, that the Lazarus, that Abraham should send Lazarus, who was known to be dead, just like the rich man too. Mm -hmm. The two of them were known to be dead. The rich man here was praying that Abraham would send the Lazarus to his father's house back in the land of the living so as to warn his five brethren who, according to him, would come to this same place of torment if they were not warned. In verse 29, sir, this particular verse. Abraham, Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. The rich man, the rich man, sir. Yes. If, even though he was dead, because he was never comforted when he was alive. He remained in the position of somebody who didn't know God. Yes. Death, death had not cured him of his nope. ignorance about God. The fact that he had, he had, he had experienced death, death does not cure, sir. Death does not cure people who do not know God when they are alive. I, I don't know whether you get what we are saying, sir. I, I understand what you are saying. The, the fact that he was dead never meant that he now knew better. Yeah. He was still in his, he was still in his ignorance. And he said, but, but, I, but if one yeah. went unto them, if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. That was, that was the dead, ignorant, rich man in hell. Pleading that Abraham will send Lazarus to come and preach to his brothers. I don't know whether you are still with me, sir. I'm with you, 100 percent Okay, good. Verse 31 is very, very important. Don't forget, don't forget this story that we are reading. These are the direct statements from the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. These are the words. These are the words of somebody, of, of, some, of the someone who created life and death. Who was, who was actually in position and listening to the conversation between two dead people, even in their death. Yes. Okay. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. That's verse 31. God has given final statement about the fact that the New Testament will not make lawful the thing that was called abomination in the Old Testament. No way. Necromancy was called abomination in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 to verse 12. Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, where you have on your screen, sir, is, re is reinforcing that even the prospect, the prospect of a living person escaping, escaping death will not cause God to send the dead to come and preach to anybody on earth. 
the prospect, the supposed prospect of the living escaping hellfire will not cause God to violate his own law about the fact that there can be no communication between the dead and the living. That's correct. So what your man said, are you with me, sir? I'm with you. By saying that, by saying that the Yemisi was actually seeing Abraham. <laughs> what your man is saying is that he actually knows much more than the writer, the author of the screen of, of the materials on your uh, before in your screen on your screen. Okay. Yes, that is that is one of the very first thing that this reverend gentleman, this old man, actually knew much more. That as far as he was concerned, God had actually changed his mind. <laughs> The principle that you have in, the, in Luke chapter 16, verse 27 to verse 31, that God will not, even for the supposed benefit of Combat, converting, converting a man, send somebody oh, from yes. heaven. From among the dead. Yes. Because apparently, if, if, if uh, his EMC was already seeing Abraham, Abraham, who, okay. died, who died about 4,000 years ago. Sing angels, singing. Yes. He was, he, she was already singing. <laughs> Actually, sir, I don't, need, I don't think I really need to say much. I just want this particular uh, passage of the Bible so that if people are allowed to sing into their mind. What this reverend gentleman is teaching is the opposite of, of the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. It's the opposite of the teaching of the God of the Bible All right. that says that there must be no communication between the dead between the dead and the living. I just want to I just want to say that very no, clearly, you, sir. You, you are very correct, sir. You are very, very correct. Yeah, Miss C was already dead. If, he, if if she was seeing Abraham, seeing the heaven, seeing all those things, she yeah. was already dead. Was so dead. his intention of leaving Zaria was to have a communication between himself and the dead. Negating the word of the scripture. Thank you. Yes, sir. So um, I, I don't know if I can if I can play. So uh, maybe we can play a little more about uh, about this thing, sir. Do you mind? Yes, let's do. Because I know it's going somewhere. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, sir. He has preached himself, so it's now going somewhere. Okay, sir. to open it I suddenly closed it back and said go back your pastor has not released you mother uh, excuse me sir yes sir I, I, if you can pause a bit yes I have you will look you will understand this even angel recognized him uh, to be the only man that he has not released he dead. So, yeah, this is the man. This is the man, sir. This is the man that releases people either to death or to life. That's exactly what he has just said. This man, this man is is the is uh, from from what I'm seeing on his face is the most important person on the, in the universe. Yes. To whom the angel akin to God learned from him. Jesus learned from him. Okay, yeah. He's a very important man. So if he has not released anybody... Not very important, sir. Not very important. Most, most important, sir. Most important. Most important. important. Most important. You know? Yes. 
We the he kids, started by saying right by head, by his answer. <laughs> no, that's what, kid, said. that's what he said. That's what. Yeah, and the kid to pregnancy. But don't forget that. That's where he started. The key to pregnancy is in his hand. Oh, okay. Yes. Let's go oh, ahead. yes. He, 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 yeah, that's why you are correct. You are correct. He, he was actually the one making the barren to be fruitful. And uh, and here again, even the, the dead, he was the one releasing them either to the, to the land of the dead or even pulling them back to the land of the living. Okay, sir. Why? Okay. And then she looked back and saw me weeping. And I was saying to her, Yeah, me see Nibolo. Taluma Bami told you come back. She on her own removed the oxygen, removed the drip. All the gadgets attached to her. She removed it and got up and we went home. Oje wan kan she. Lojo ti ogumba le ka le roro so. Yeah, because I, I thought you would miss that. No, no, no I, I thought you would miss that. No, sir. I speak about yes, and uh, Ojewa and Kanshi for the benefit of people who watch this uh, video from other parts of the world. Uh, here, here is our man now preaching that uh, your work, your work in the church is the basis for your life is the basis for whether you are whether whether you return from the land of the dead or whether you are released you are released to to death that that's that's what that's what you said in Yoruba. yes it is it is your work it is your work in his church that determines your life or your death. Whether you are dead or alive. Yes, yes. That, that, that's for the benefit of uh, those uh, people who watch this who, who do not speak the Yoruba language. Second, Tonso. Ojewa, my joke, Obo say joke, don't sit down the way you sit down in church. Don't use God as if God is to be used. Serve him so that whenever there is problem, we will have something to say. I'm a ring consul. And there are many of you, if anything happens, we don't have anything to say. And there are people we are praying for. I want to pray, no more. We are not Yeah. If if you are not uh, if you are not active in the church and uh, you you fall down and you're about to die. Uh, there, there will be no hope for you. Is your is your church activity is the extent of your church activity that will help us to actually put in a word for you on your behalf? I think that I think that's what that's what I just said. Yeah, that's what you say. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Because gossip basis. Religious prayers, political prayers, we do that a lot. Otherwise, we not do that. We don't 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 do that. We do do that. do they, they do political prayers when they just pray uh, even though they know that their prayers will not be will not be heard by God they, they say the prayers and uh, because in any case there's no basis for the prayer 
since the person they are praying for uh, is not actively involved in the church, is not is not actively engaged. They know they know God. God hears the prayers of uh, or, uh, their their prayers in respect of people who are who are really actively for who are really actively engaged in the church. Uh, so it, it is actually the 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 works and the engagement in His church, not the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that is the basis of uh, God hearing hearing their prayer. I think that's what He had just said, sir. Yeah, that's what you are just saying. <clears throat> so so we, we should forget about the idea of the blood of Christ or the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your your level of activity in the church is actually the, the, the thing. So that One of the elders in John uh, uh, Higgins, is it Higgins? Higgins, Tulsa, <laughs> fell inside the boiler. A boiler in a, and the boiler boiled him. And Higgins was called that your elder fell into a boiler, but they rescued him, but he has become, he has been cooked. The Higgins came and grabbed him and held him and cried to God. And an angel of God appeared and re repaired all the damages in the body and told Hagen, go back with your elder. Go back to church with your elder because he's a serving elder. And if we allowed him to go, we will miss him. I pray that you will. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether you heard what you just said. I had everything. You had everything. Okay, sir. Uh, this is uh, one of those uh, tall tales that these people uh, actually say about their God, Kenneth Hagin. Uh, one of the elders in the church of Kenneth Hagin. This, this same Kenneth Hagin that taught totally antichrist ideas, antichrist teachings, antichrist doctrines. Can I take it that thought that Christ was born again in hell? Can I take it that thought that Christ died spiritually? Christ actually died spiritually, not physically, not just physically. The Trinity was actually caught asunder. There was a time, there was a time when there was no longer Trinity because Christ had died spiritually. The relationship between God and Christ had been totally caught. Can I hear him that taught all those things? Our man is coming out to say, Another in his church fell into a boiler and was cooked. And Ken Hagen went there, carry the cooked flesh. Only for an angel to appear and to sew back all the threads, the vein the arteries and the sinews of the man and hand over the man back to Kenai Higgin to take back to his church. Incidentally, sir, if you go to the medical records of the United States of America, you are not going to see this long tail in the medical records of the US. Hey, this man, Probably he doesn't know he doesn't know the use of English. Uh, the, the man uh, speaks very good English. He speaks very good Yoruba, very good English. I know, so because can, uh, we don't really allow you, sir, to excuse him for oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Because he was talking of somebody who was cooked. 
Yeah. Rescued. How could yeah. you rescue somebody who has been cooked? Rescued. See, that's you, my... You know, if you have it, if you have tall tales to tell, if you have very tall tales to tell, you can say anything, sir. Uh, okay. All right. So, All so right. sir, sir, if people can see that this evil did not start with Joshua Selman. No. Not this with Arume. This evil. This evil that is calling the self Christianity in Nigeria did not start with Osai Arome. This evil did not start with Michael Oropo. This evil, sir, had been in Nigeria for a long time, at least at least for the last uh, sixty years. At least for the last 50 years. Yes, sir. So the, the fact that this is a fairly aged man. You see, there's something I want to say before we close this uh, video, because it's likely we'll close it very shortly, sir. And yes. that is that. And that is that. What we are talking about, sir, is the belief. What really do you believe? The, the, fact, the fact that all the hairs on your head, they are all gray and white. <laughs> if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't know him. No, you don't know him. If, if, you see, age, age does not convert you into a sage, as far as the Bible is concerned. You do, you do not become a wise person because you are now the oldest preacher around. If if you if I didn't if you didn't show the face of this man, you would think this. Do you think that is a Joshua Selman speaking? Mm, mm. Or, or you think that is a Osai Arume speaking? Mm. Or Rocco really? Or Rocco? These are the deceived people in the class of David Oedipo that had been sent by the devil to mislead people working in Nigeria. For the past 45, 50 years, preaching only themselves, never Christ. <laughs>